Microsoft Office. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see all you guys. Good to see you. Good to see guests. Good to see friends. Family. I know there's been a, there's been some loss. Yeah. There's been some victories. And uh, I think in any occasion, it's appropriate to uh, praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Yes. And so uh, I'm thankful today. Amen. To uh, introduce about fellowship, it's about relationship um, in the body of Christ and amongst our brothers and sisters. Amen. And, and it has become more important uh, than ever, I think, recently, just with uh, the series of events that's been happening. So, uh, we're going to open up today. We're going to do things fairly similar to how we open up. Um, but we're also going to introduce life groups this morning as well. And each person who is going to be running that life group is going to come up and give a brief explanation of what their life group is going to look like. And uh, the time frames and what that life group is going to entail. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. <coughs> So midweek services, we got worship and prayer Wednesday night, 6 p.m. Uh, nothing's changed on that one. That is here. Walter Youth, so Friday from 6.30 to 8 o'clock. Um, only time that time frame changes if we do movie night with the kids. We try to start a little bit early. Um, that is grades 6 through 12. So feel free to bring your children there to that. Um, they've been having a great time. So Friday night, bonfire and worship, May 10th. So this is Greg and Kelly's place. Um, that's you just correct. Yes. Friday night, May 10th. Friday night, May 10th. So the time, yeah, so the day is correct. Still waiting on the exact time. Yeah. Because what we're wanting to do, obviously, is a bonfire, right? So we're going to try to aim for when it gets dark. So I'm sure that info is going to come to you guys pretty quickly. And so again, life groups starting uh, the week of April 21st. Um, can't stress enough how important it is just to have fellowship and have friends and have people in your life. This is this is the core of what we do. This is the core of the Christian walk. I would say.
did you just begin to give your life to God? Or have you been walking with Him for 30, 40 years? You'll always find that God will always require more of you. In order to take that next step of getting in the relationship and getting closer to Him, He's going to ask a little bit more of you. And this song reminded me of that. Just a, a, a song of surrender. And I just feel like the, a, a very soft and gentle presence of the Lord. I want to continue to sing that, Lord, uh, that song a little bit more. I want to sing that song in those few verses just a little bit more. But I want people, I feel like there's a need for people to respond to it. And I know that we might be responding in our own hearts, and our own ways, in our seats. But sometimes the Lord is asking us to take a step. I think that we're in a season, you know, in this, these end times. The world is falling. The Lord has been very gracious in this season. And that he's given us his holy scriptures to tell us what will happen before it happens so that when it happens, we might respond. We might respond accordingly. I think it's being revealed in our hearts right now what we're still gravitating toward or holding on to in this present world. And the Lord is asking us, and I'm just being, I'm just a truth speaker, okay? But the Lord is asking us to let go of this world and to reach for the next. I could just be truthfully honest with you. It does not mean that we do not still live in this world. It does not mean that we still do not take business in this world. We still need to do things. But we need to let go of this present world. It can't have a grip on our hearts. You see what I'm saying? I, I, I've explained it to my wife and my daughters this way. I said, hey, in your own way, just say, Lord Jesus, when you come back, take me. <laughs> you know, if, if, if it's in, I, I don't want anything to have a hold of my heart that will keep me here. I do not want to be found like Lot's wife who looked back. That's good, Pastor. Looked back at Sodom and looked at the luxuries and the things that that city had for them. Right? But the she, 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 that was her error, right? She was turned into a pillar of salt because she looked back. Listen, I know that some of us have kids and we want to see them grow up and we want to see them get married and go to college. Hey, hope for those things. It's okay. But do not let them grip you so much that you don't want to go see the kingdom of heaven. Let me just tell you right now, the kingdom of heaven will not be a downgrade. I don't know exactly what he has in store for us. We do not know what we will be, but we know that we will be like him when he comes. Amen? That's what the scripture says. It says that we will be like him when he comes. So I can tell you right now that whatever this world has to offer, it can't compare. Please hear this preacher. It can't compare with what he has for you. And so please, in your own way, in your own heart, let's respond. And sometimes that might be just in a physical act of surrender to the soldier. That's up to you. No, no coercion, no manipulation. But sometimes I just want to encourage you that it's open. Sometimes an act of faith is just walking up and surrendering and saying, hey, I surrender. So as you hear to sing this song, Take My Life, right? Sometimes we just got to walk and take a step out and say, Lord, there is nothing that breaks my heart. There's anything that does, show me and let me release it unto you. Amen? Amen.
Thank you, Brian.
pursuit of holiness is what we're going to be studying. And it's for women, the, the older women. It says in Titus 2, older women, you lean, you take the younger women, and you, you know, you walk with them, and you teach them how to be good wives, good, you know, good students of their household, good moms and stuff. And so it's for everyone. But also, we as women are called to be confident and bold in what we ask for, like Esther, who came before the throne of a king, Amen. or like Jael, who won an entire battle. Yeah. Yeah. So just the pursuit, gosh, the pursuit of holiness. It's just, it's going to be across the board. We're going to focus on a lot of women in the Bible, but we're also going to focus on what we're called to do, because the time is coming. The time is coming, and it's coming soon. Amen. Amen. Preparation. Thank you. related to men uh, uh, and some fellowship, just to have fellowship and to bring unity amongst men in the church is, is, uh, is important. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and I'm looking forward to it. So, yeah. um, it'll be on, uh, the first meeting will be on the 20th, that's of April, right? yep. April 20th. All these are in April. So we'll do it at the same time as the ladies, 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Yeah. Um, and the uh, location will be to be determined. Uh, so we'll probably, uh, once we get, you know, who's all involved, we'll, uh, we'll communicate to you guys with uh, what the time is. Okay. So we'll have to see the location. Or the location. Yeah. Black Creek. No, it's in the town square. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And Shreya. Yeah, I forgot to say where it was. It's in the town square. We're going to meet right out in the open, and whoever passes by, like whatever woman passes by, we'll invite them in for coffee. Yes. <laughs> Bring your lawn chairs. <laughs> Bring your lawn chairs, yep. Right on. I have one more thing, too. It's April 17. April. April, not May. Yes. If you're interested in one of those life groups, go and talk to the individual. Yes. Uh, there will be a sheet to yes. put you guys on. So if you're interested in going, and Trez should put you down on. Alcinas, Walters, and Pastors. Create a text group. Et cetera. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Amen. 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 Let's say this morning's uh, tithes and offerings stand and conduct. Transition. Okay. Taylor. 
one more. One That's more. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll do it later. later. salvation or when they want to come to the Lord. Mm. Um, but if you're standing firm and you're available, yeah. sometimes they, they come to you. Mm. Almost like being fishers of men. Amen? Yeah. Sometimes mm -hmm. they come to you. Mm. And so I just appreciate you being available uh, for me in that time. And I believe God has put his word in your heart. Truthfully. And so uh, I'm looking forward to what he has to say today. So, All right. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. talk today about the heart. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys do pay attention. I've just been hearing, you know, Sharia worship, the heart. Um, today, uh, my message, the title of my message is A Heart on Display. Yeah. Right. A heart <laughs> on display. <laughs> you know, you walk into a mall or a shopping center, what do you see? You see displays, right? You see, uh, you see a bunch of, uh, you know, they're selling things. It still shows you what's inside, right? Uh, it shows you what, um, what's there to purchase. Uh, the heart, um, the heart is the seat of uh, the emotions and the passions, uh, the things that are in the innermost when it comes to. Men and women. Uh, this is where we, we deal with life's issues. Uh, this also is the very place that Christ enters into us. We, we begin to believe in our heart because He begins to deal with our lives um, uh, in that place. In that, in that He comes to that place where um, um, our innermost being is, and He begins to to, to work things yeah. out there. Mm -hmm. um, Today I'm going to read uh, out of Matthew uh, 15 chapter. Look, it's, I got a lot of scripture. I usually have a lot of scripture, um, uh, which is good. We also have a lot of scripture, right? Amen. You know, exactly. We Come on. always have you know a lot of scripture. Or when we read, we should really we, we kind of study things out and um, uh, let the Lord bring revelation to some things uh, that you read. So. Um, a heart on display. And uh, we're going to start at Matthew chapter uh, 15, verse 21 through 28. I'll read. 
starting at verse 21. Uh, then Jesus went out from there and departed to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came from that region and cried out to him saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she cries out after us. But he answered and said, Too late. I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. <laughs> And she said, yes, Lord, but, <laughs> or yet, right? Even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said to her, oh, woman, oh, woman, great is your faith. Great is your faith. Hallelujah. You know, I was reading. I was reading over this, uh, and um, I seen when I, I was I was looking at. It, I seen Jesus gave this one of the hard sayings, man. It's like you know, really hard sayings. Really hard, like you know, what if you were like, hey, you know, coming to the Lord, He's like, I'm coming for you. I come up for a house lost lost sheep of Israel, you know, or and he or he says, hey, you know, you come to him, you're asking things he's like, well. You know, it's not good to give the children's bread to the dogs. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, uh, don't have to go too far. But this, this, this is called a heart on display because we're going to look and see at the heart. We're going to look at the heart of this woman. Mm -hmm. And we're going to look at our own hearts too. Mm -hmm. You're ready. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're ready. Okay. Uh, so this woman's heart was positioned right. It was positioned in the right place from the start. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So verse 22, Matthew 15, 22, she cried out. She was crying out after Jesus. This woman was from Canaan. This wasn't a woman of, uh, uh, in Jerusalem or, you know, where they were. This is not a woman that was, she wasn't a Jew. She wasn't a disciple. She wasn't following after Jesus and sitting at his feet day by day. Right. And so I, I, I thought about that and I was like, well, how, how is it that she knew? How, how did she know? So she cried out. She cried out how she knew who he was. Uh, she cried out. So this is her prayerful approach. You know, this could be like for us. We, we have a prayerful approach to the Lord. We begin to cry out to the Lord uh, at times in our lives. Um, and this is what she did. She cried out. Um, and her approach, not only, not only did she cry out to the Lord, but her approach uh, began with asking for mercy. We're looking at her heart. She's asking for mercy. Lord, have mercy upon me. Now, this, this, has, been my, this has been my situation before in my life. Lord, have mercy. Mm. Right. So she acknowledged her need. She acknowledged her need mm -hmm. of what he possessed. Mercy is the essential quality of God. Um, yeah. He is the father of mercies. Amen. Mm -hmm. He's the father of mercies. This is uh, what Paul Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians 1 and 3 says, uh, Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. Right. right. Paul said this because he, he came to acknowledge that this is who Christ was. 
uh, in his experience with Christ. He could say this. Mercy is also associated with forgiveness. I know this very well. Um, when you cry out to the Lord and you ask for forgiveness, which you do over and over again, you're asking for mercy. Have mercy on me because of my condition, because of who I am. You're asking for mercy. See, this lady knew this. This lady knew to come to the Lord with to acknowledge Him in these ways. Begging for mercy, asking for mercy, asking for asking uh, prayerfully. She cried out to him prayerfully in prayer. This is the way we communicate with the Lord today. Yeah. We communicate with Him in prayer, uh, and, and, and we, the Lord, uh, have mercy on me. I'm sorry for for the things that I've done. Yeah. This is, a, this is a pattern, but remember, God is a God of mercy. The God we serve is a God of mercy. And mercy is associated with forgiveness. Um, and also, to flip the coin, we also, we need that for one another. Right. Not only us in the church, but our family members, right. people that we encounter, people on the streets, people that are at our jobs, you know, somebody that may do something to you, you know, and you Forgiveness, right? You gotta forgive them. The Lord said, uh, the Lord was asked, how many times shall we forgive our brother if he says this? Is 70 times 70, he said. That's a lot. You know, most people don't sin against you that many times. <laughs> so it's enough, right? It's enough. Uh, and it's somebody blessed. But you know, you know, me once. Uh, uh, but mercy is associated with forgiveness. And um, if I can find it in my heart, uh, then I can forgive. I can have forgiveness for someone else. Amen. Uh, you know, as, as the body of Christ, we take on that, uh, the person of Christ, the mind of Christ, and that, that's a part of it. That's a part of my forgiveness. Now, forgiveness can, can block a lot of stuff in your life from happening. Forgiveness can hinder your prayer life, hinder your, hinder your blessings, hinder your growth in the Lord. Unforgiveness. Unforgiveness. Uh, yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> Unforgiveness. Yeah. Um, so, so uh, Paul also in uh, 1 Timothy 1 6, he writes, he says, How be it for this cause I obtain, how be it for this cause I obtain mercy? Uh, that in me, first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering as a pattern to him, to them, that's us, which should hereafter believe on him. Uh, to life everlasting. Right. Paul obtained mercy. Paul received mercy. Paul received forgiveness. If we know the story of Paul, we know he needed a lot of it. You know, he, oh, yeah. he, was, he was intent on the death of Christians. Yeah. And this is who God chose. We can say that he is a God of mercy. He's a God uh, that knows our hearts, too. Amen. The heart on display. Amen. He obtained mercy. So we see uh, this uh, characteristic of God. Uh, Paul wouldn't have been able to move forward without first receiving mercy right. from God. He wouldn't have been able to, he wouldn't have been able to, we wouldn't have this, uh, this majority of the New Testament without mercy, right. without forgiveness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you see how these are uh, these attributes are associated uh, that that God has uh, are right before our eyes today. So verse twenty two, uh, uh, Matthew fifteen, uh, she uh, the Lord. Um, verse twenty two says, uh, "And behold, the woman of Canaan came from the region and cried out to him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David.'" My daughter is severely demon possessed. So she acknowledged Jesus there. She 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 positioned him. Now, you know, she positioned him as Lord. She said, Lord. Right. 
This positions him as being over all things. Able. The ability to do all things. Yeah. Have mercy, O oh Lord. Lord of hosts. Are you familiar with that? The Lord of hosts. You see that all throughout the Bible. It means having dominion and power over all things created. Right. Uh -huh. Over all things created. All things under his control. She declared him to have great power. Her heart is on display. This is the way she approached the Lord. She said, she called him son of David. She was a Canaanite. But she said, she called him son of David. Mm -hmm. This is something that Israel would know. <clears throat> this is something that they would, they would understand perfectly. Uh, especially those who knew the law. And those who, you know, the scribes, those who were, uh, uh, those were, who were in God's word. Um, they missed a lot of things. But, <laughs> but they, uh, they would have known this, this term, son of David. It places him on the throne as king. That's right. This places him on the throne uh, as king. So she said, Lord, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. You who are in all control. The one who sits on the throne on earth Amen. and in heaven. All of this was in that. This wasn't just, just her coming, oh, Lord, have mercy on me. This had deep meaning. Yes. Yes. Right. Yeah. I believe Jesus knew this, too. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Remember, this is a Canaanite woman. This is a Gentile. Mm -hmm. This is a Gentile. Mm -hmm. uh, Psalms 132, 11 says, The Lord has sworn in truth to David. Uh, he will not turn from it. I will set upon your throne the fruit of your body. This is a promise that God gave to David that the throne would always have the fruit of his body. I'm not going to get into it today. <laughs> that, that's, uh, that was going somewhere else. But we know Jesus as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And when we see in these things, we see how we should always position our hearts before the Lord. And the only way that you could begin to do this is by getting in His Word. And That's right, Amen. Being mm -hmm. in prayer, being in worship, then we can yeah. understand who God is. Yeah. He wants to reveal Himself to us all more and more. Amen. Whatever level that you're at, He wants to He wants to reveal more and more Amen. of Himself to you. His mercy, His grace is sufficient. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, in our times of weakness. I'm going to go with something else uh, really quick take a turn uh, down the road uh, Matthew chapter 15 verse 18 uh, Jesus uh, and, and, and it's, it's the same it's the same chapter it's awesome you know I was reading it's, like, oh, it's the same you know, it's the same place where you run into the story about this Gentile woman. And, you know, Jesus was already beginning to teach about the heart. That's mm -hmm. mm -hmm. what he's talking about. Because Pharisees would tell the you know, disciples, man, I wash their hands when they eat. <laughs> <laughs> they, you know, they don't, they don't, they're not doing according to tradition. She, uh, she's wearing pants in church. Yeah. Uh oh, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> Things like that, right? Because you know that's how he's been. Uh -huh. <laughs> but uh, Matthew 15 and 18 says, "But those things which proceed out of the mouth come from the heart, uh, and they defile a man." And the reason why he's saying that they defile a man is because they just had this discussion about washing hands. Things, but Jesus wanted to point it back to their hearts. 
It's not this. It's it's not. It's not that he was saying. He said no. What defiles man is what comes out of his mouth. And he also said, what comes out of a man's mouth comes from his heart. It comes from the seat of your life, your, who you are, your inner being, your inward man. What comes out of your mouth. So we see the woman's heart on full display. We can see it even better now, right? Mm -hmm. You yeah. can see it better from that context, from, from from looking at it from the standpoint of what comes out of your mouth. Right. It's coming from the heart. Mm -hmm. yeah. Lord of all power, <clears throat> king above all positions on the earth, This is who she approached him as. She, she, uh, she confessed these things with her mouth. This is who you are. I know you can do this for me. I know you can do this. I wonder how she knew. You know, uh, she must have heard the reports. We have reports right here. We also can, can come to know the Lord through this report that we have, uh, the Bible. Verse 23, Matthew 15, 23, says, but he answered not a word. I know at that point she was probably wondering. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. remember, this is prayerfully being said. This is in prayer. This is, you know, when you're in chant, you're, you're, you're seeking the Lord in prayer, you know, uh, she's prayerfully crying out. She's prayerfully asking. She's perfectly declaring who he is and what he can do. Yeah. But he answered not a word, you know. Uh, I love the Lord, man. He, you know, it's <laughs> awesome way he does stuff. It's like, you know, I just see the Lord sitting there like, nothing. You know, <laughs> you know? And, uh, I, mean, I, find, I find humor when I read the word. I find joy. Yeah. You know, I don't look at it like that It's serious and it's real. But I also love to, to look at the personality uh, uh, in progress, you know, at the time. And um, it says the Lord answered not a word. Uh, and I know, uh, have you ever felt like that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you felt like the, your prayer is not answered, you know, you've been praying on something for a while. You know, but it's just, you know, it's, you're not getting any answers or you don't think you're getting any answers. Um can you imagine how peace she could have felt? Like she was writing for the Lord. He was like, <laughs> right? Uh, just no answer. Uh, but she could have felt like not heard, right? Uh, she could have felt overcome with doubt at that time. Uh, she could have been doubting like, you know, remember, remember, we're, we're looking at her heart. The heart is on display. And she could have been doubting at that time. She could have been... Um, Yeah. Beginning to question her decision, even approach the Lord. Right. And not only that, but the disciples were saying, send her away. Yeah. Yeah. After all that, after all the all of her heart being revealed and crying out, you know. The disciples really didn't seem to Understand. She could have possibly heard these things as like, just take another route. You know, take another route. Just go another way. Right. Just walk away. Or you'd be too much to deal with. Too much to deal with. Yeah. Just, just go another way. And this lady is going through a lot at this time. Mm -hmm. uh, and some of us, we've also been through some things. 
been through some things like that, experienced like rejection or uh, just sound feel like I'm hurt or uh, things like that, things that um, uh, that we've experienced. Um, I don't know if myself I'll share something. Um, uh, you know, when me and my wife we were um, we we were we were we were drug addicts. Um, and there was a time, you know, we, we had we had just had we when it came off, you know, we were coming off the drugs, we were we were, you know, I remember times we were on drugs and we'd still be going half mercy. Yeah. The Lord has answered our prayer. Amen. Amen. He, we're sitting here today. Yeah. I'm telling you it was a time when when we was we was looking bad. We were looking bad, and you know, um, we we didn't have a, a place to live. Uh, you know, I lost that because <laughs> I, I messed up, and um, we, you know, we used to go to this church. You know, we just we just tried to seek God. We wanted to continue to look for the Lord, look to the Lord, even in our condition. Amen. Amen. Even, even, even Amen. just tore back. Right. We still, we still, we, we, we was going to find a place to pray. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Right? Uh, we, we, we were going to a Catholic church just to pray. Yeah. We were Catholic, but we went there to pray. <laughs> we got on our knees. Yeah. This is our beginnings. Right. We got on our knees and we prayed. This is 2010? Yeah. Something like that? 11. 11. 11. You know, we got on our knees and we prayed. Yeah. Um, well, we went to this one church, and, you know, we were in a bad situation, but at the same time, we kind of felt, we felt the feeling of rejection, you know, just because, like, you know, they heard our story, you know, and so they was like, you know, we were staying with a guy, you know, on the mom's crazy, you know, you know, it, like, you know they know, like, oh, these, you know, they've been on drugs, you know, because oh, yeah. you, know, <laughs> you, know, you know, they make sure they're not trying to take over the house, make sure they're not trying to, you know, make sure you lock stuff up. Make sure it's not, you know, church people. Hey, okay, okay, I'm not going to say it too much. Because I don't, I'm not the one that believes the church hurts. So no, you'll get hurt by church. Don't go to church. That's not what I'm saying. Yeah. What I'm saying is the hearts. All right. Mm. These are, this is, it's not only her heart on display. These are hearts on display. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? yeah. And, I, and, I, and I'm sure they say we're going to heaven. I'm not saying that they're not. Right. Mm. You know? But in different circumstances. Different circumstances. How do you deal with with what was before you? Right. You always got to be cautious. The Bible even tells us love, but do it with wisdom or uh, discernment. Yeah. Bless you for it. Yeah. Uh, we got to be discerning, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, but it is another time. You know, but I'm just really, really upset with you. But uh, like I say, this is not to to put shed any type of bad light on the church. Amen. That's not what I'm here for. Right. I'm not yeah. seeking this to say that. Because I know those people are saved too. Right. But it's just sometimes we do things and we really don't take into consideration of the people. Right. Just like the disciples. And I don't think they really take into consideration the fact that this lady came and just fell down and poured her heart out, yeah. asking for mercy and help. Right. right. Declaring that he was the son of, of David, yeah. meaning he had position and place on the throne. I don't think they really were considering those things. Right. Um, right. Mm -hmm. But we was the well, you know, there, we had our, little, our daughter, Lois, and you know, it was like a, they wouldn't let her get me. They said she wasn't black enough to be in the. <laughs> they said she's not black enough to be in the, in, the, in the black baby thing we got going on. I was like, really? Like, really? Oh they, they probably didn't realize it, it hurt me, but it did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, right. So, you know, I, I forget, man. I've got that passage. But, I'm just using it as an example. Amen. Sometimes you just don't understand what you're doing. Right. Which oh. Jesus. You know, sometimes you know, we're all guilty of it too. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> but just as an example. <laughs> um, back to the lady. Uh, people feel people feel their spiritual bankruptcy and helplessness. Uh, who long for the help and salvation of God are in the right condition yeah. to be met by God. Yeah. 
Amen. Right position. Say that again. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> People who feel their spiritual bankruptcy and helplessness and who long for the help and salvation of God are in the right condition to be met and blessed by God. That's it, right? Yeah. 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 That's it. Thank you, Jesus. That's good. Mm. I started to see people in church, they see the other way. You know, you're sitting in the pew and you're ready. Amen. Um, you, you're going to receive a blessing wherever you're at when you acknowledge that you're bankrupt spiritually. Amen. Mm. You're bankrupt spiritually. Yes. I, I mean, I'm I've been serving the Lord for, for a while. I'm still acknowledging. Right. Yeah, I don't think that stops. Right. That's position. That's when you're positioned in the right place with the Lord. When your heart is right before the Lord. When you're in that place. Um, Back to the text of Matthew 15, 24. But he answered, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I believe right then at that moment, I think I think the Lord, the Lord knows what he was doing, man. He said, because he didn't say nothing for a minute, and then he, he said, well, okay. Yeah, I wasn't sent what except for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And I believe the Lord was at that point was trying to put was, was putting this woman's heart on display. I think for the disciples. He was beginning to show. He wanted to show us today. Uh-huh. But he wanted to show them right then at that time. Uh-huh. So he said, okay, I'm telling you. Yep. Uh, I haven't come except for the lost sheep in the house of Israel. Uh-huh. And after he said this, uh, verse 25, uh, she came and worshipped him mm-hmm. with her heart. Mm-hmm. All everything she went through, everything she could have possibly felt, she still worshipped him. Yes. She Amen. knew Amen. he was yes. he was God. Yes. She knew he was king. Yes. She knew he had all power, all dominion, all authority over everything. Amen. Clean spirits, unclean spirits, anything he could yes. do. She knew that he, she knew that he, he, I think she knew that if I just keep praising and keep on worshiping you, that you don't hear me. Amen. Come on. Yeah. If I just keep praising if I just keep giving my heart to you, if I keep falling down on my knees worshiping you, yes. yeah. you're going to hear me. Yes. If I give you my heart, if I lay my heart before your feet, you're going to hear me. I don't care what's going on. I don't care what they say. Mm. I'm concerned about right now what's important in my life. I believe you're going to hear me. She kept saying, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. It's okay to say that. I say it. Yes. Amen. Amen. Help me. Help me. Yes. I don't like this. Please help me. Persistent. Petitioning. Interceding. Now remember, she came from her daughter. Interceding. She didn't come herself alone. She got blessed through her idea. <laughs> but she still had enough knowledge, enough understanding to know who she was approaching and how to approach her. Sharp cries of her heart in distress. Can you guys remember a day like that? Oh, yeah. 
Like I said, we're gonna look at our own hearts too. I do. I remember days like that. Verse 26, uh, Matthew 15, 26. So we got to know our heart. Um, uh, and I hope that um, we can learn to emulate her faith, emulate her yeah. uh, approach yeah. to the Lord. Uh, understand, uh, as, you know, as you read, see, uh, understand uh, what she received at the end. Uh, verse 26 uh, says, but he answered, it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. And she said, yes. You're right. In other words, yes, Lord, yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Right. <laughs> See her heart? Yeah. She acknowledges who she is. Right. This is not what we were just talking about. She acknowledges. Yes. She acknowledges. Yeah, yeah, that's me. Yep. But I still know yeah. that you're able. Yes. Amen. I know you got so much on that table of grace that if a crumb fell off of it, it would be enough for me. Right. Yes. Yes. It would be yes. enough for me to have. Just one crumb right. of what you have. Mm. What you can do. Uh -huh. yes. Just one touch. Yes. One whisper, Lord. Yes. And I know you can heal my daughter. Yes. There's a heart. <laughs> and I, I, uh, I did this for myself. And I was reading this. Uh, I was reading where where Jesus said uh, it's not good to take the bread, children's bread, and throw it to the dogs. And then I, I just thought about uh, Matthew chapter seven, uh, verse six, where, where Jesus said, "Do not give what is holy to the dogs, um, nor cast your pearls before swine." Mm. Lest they trample them under their feet and turn and tear you into pieces. And, you know, I'm more like, I think about that, but I believe God wanted me to use that particular scripture personally to examine my heart. Amen. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh -oh. yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> but that's what I said. I was like, oh, man, really? Yeah. And I never, I've never, I've heard the scripture, I can give some context. Um, in, Matthew, in Matthew chapter seven, Jesus was Jesus was teaching about uh, removing the plank from your own eye before you try to take the one out of your brother's eye. Yes. Okay. Yes. 
And there's a bit, there's a dialogue there about judgment, being judgment, you know. So just to give you a little bit more, if you want to read it, it's in Matthew chapter 7. But I believe God, want, God wanted me and us to uh, examine our own hearts with this. Right. It may not be an approach that you've ever, never probably approached it like this. You can give it a try. Yeah. This is a hard saying, too. This is a really hard saying. Like, it was for me. At least I accepted that. It's a really hard saying for me personally. Um, so I was led to um, just take a minute and mirror uh, my own heart personally uh, with that verse. Um, and, and just examine my heart and ask myself uh, a few questions. Uh, you know, because, it, it, you know, it, like, it's not like, am I a dog? <laughs> you, know? <laughs> it's, you know what I mean? Uh, right. Am I like a swine when it comes to the things of God? Mm. It was really, it was really tough. Yeah. But I really, I, I, I ask myself, uh, do I give reverence to what is holy? Right. Mm. Mm. Do I give reverence to what's holy? And understand our Lord, being truthful is what sets you free. Yep. Amen. Yep. And so, examining our hearts, I mean, the Bible tells us to examine our hearts to see that we're still, if we're in the faith, mm -hmm. this is something we should do anyway. Mm -hmm. um, examine our hearts to see if we're in the faith. Examine our hearts to see what it is. And then we can become uh, uh, transparent with the Lord and begin to work things out. Yeah. We, we all, this is a process. Sanctification or being holy is a process oh, that we go through. And this process, um, it requires things like this. It requires you to intently look at our, our own hearts. Honesty. Yeah. Honesty. Transparency. Yeah. Understand, man, you, you have a Lord, man. He's a good God. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. yes, he, is. he is a merciful God. He's faithful to his word. He says he's forgiven. He's forgiven. We just have to accept that. Right. Yes. Amen. Do I honestly strive in prayer and the word of God to remove the speck in my eye? I ask myself. Am I diligent? Am I seeking the Lord every day? Do I have time for the Lord to really, to really begin this? With, you know, <coughs> some to really begin even uh, uh, working things out with the Lord myself. You know, uh, mm. getting rid of that habit. Mm. Yeah. Am I spending time? Am I, am I really working out what's going on in my heart? Mm. Because His Word tells me to. But how I receive it or how I, you know, I, I said, I didn't want to be a dog. You know what I mean? Like, I love the Lord. Like, but I, I really checked myself really hard with, with that, that passage. Oh, yeah. Because I don't want to be as a swine or a dog when it comes to the things that are holy. Uh, that are holy. I don't want to be, I don't want to be the, the person that just carelessly walks out this Christian life mm. without truly uh, coming to find out what it is that God has for me All right. in my life. I don't want that. I've done that. Yes. I've done that and I bumped my head. I've come to know I need the Lord. I know I need I know yeah. what position I need to be in before the Lord. I know I need to humble myself. I know I need to, to have a helpless disposition before the Lord before I can do anything. Right. It's not by my might or my strength. But it's by His Spirit. Amen. It's by His Spirit. Yeah. And in order to approach a holy God, I have to position myself in this manner in order to receive from the Lord. Right. To get His ear, His attention. All right. And I believe this lady got His attention. And that's why I believe that He began to, to, to show His disciples, like, check this out, you guys. Man, I'll show you something. <laughs> check this out. You guys need something. 
They, you know, they backed up a lot. There's a word, prayer, and worship, fellowship. Fellowship is dead. Read first, read first John. Read John. Read the first John, my little John. It's dead. Love one another. This is another way you can examine yourself. It's a thing of God. It's something of God. This is holy before God. This is how the world knows who we are. Amen. Come yes. on. Yes. See that right. much? You know, a lot of times, like, man, who are you? Yes. No, but this is how they know who we are. This is how they know that we are in Christ. When I'm in the Word, how does my heart respond? And you kind of see how I respond. Because I don't check myself like, like, for real? Okay. You're not cast. I don't want to give us only to the dogs. Okay. And I just asked myself if I was a dog in that manner. Amen. Well, how much do I reverence God? Amen. Big things here. Big challenge. Yes. Think of challenges. How does your heart respond when you're challenged in the church? Mm. How does your heart respond when pastor or someone else in leadership challenges you? Your brother challenges you. Somebody that you that you're close to. You might you know we have each other, then we have each other. Somebody that you're close to. How how, how does your heart respond? Mm. Mm. Do you acknowledge the fact that they're in the Lord? They're in the Lord. And their concern for you is spiritually backed and full of love. But it's usually possibly a hard saying. So you have to accept or hear in order to... to get where you need to be. Pastor okay. you know? um, Russ challenged me. <laughs> hey, man. Yeah. Um, he's challenged me, challenged me because uh, I get lazy. You know, not, not just lazy, but I'll let me, I'll let the entire just control. Hey, Amen. And you know, deep in my heart, I know, you know, I need to do more. You know, like, I can do that, you know. You know, I could do a little bit more, you know. And so the pastor has challenged me and um no we're testing. And you know, I did the normal thing, I said, Hey, you know, I'm tired, right? Pastor? I was like, yeah, I'm like, tired of saying I'm rest, man. I'm like, I'm I've heard that one. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, no, I don't know. Okay. Hard on display. Yeah. I don't know. So uh, but anyway, I, he texts me back, and I'm glad. That's his job. Yes. He's a shepherd, and you know, sometimes you need somebody to poke you a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what a shepherd does to the sheep. Yeah. You got a partner, right? You got to poke him sometimes.
the growth right. in everyone. And, I, and, I, and it's a privilege to be able to do that. Oh, because yes, yes. we're not dealing with just people. Right. We're dealing with, with, with men and women who God has a purpose to call. We're dealing with God, the image of God. And if God has went out of his way to reach you, yeah. he's went out of his way to work in your life, I'm, I'm going to respect that and I'm going to love that. And I'm going to enjoy being a part of that. Amen. 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 This ain't by one man alone. This is the body. Thank you. We got a hand in the church. Thank you. We got different ministries. And It's not just doing something. I mean, we sing or whatever, we do that, but it's deeper than that. It's deeper than that. You can't even do that right unless you're really doing that right. Right. You can't. You know? And without love, you just lie. So see, I, I just wanted to display, give us a chance to look at our own hearts. Uh, I look at my heart. This is this is uh, this is what sort of produce growth. If you if you if you grab a hold of it. It's going to produce growth in your life. Um, to receive instruction for the way to your purpose or direction for your lives in the body of Christ, sometimes confronting yourself, a hard saying. Woo-hoo. I'm sorry, I'm needed to position ourselves for blessings. Uh, blessings of, of answered prayers, uh, the desires of your heart. God also will give you the, desire, the desires of your heart. Um, all the, position, the petitions that we make for ourselves, uh, our needs, our supplications, and our needs, um, the intercession that we do for others, uh, the way, we, the way we, you know, we got the prayer line and we lift up people. You, know, you just call, you just put it down there and people start praying start bringing that situation before the Lord. Um, these things begin to become solidified in faith. God hears us. His word says that he hears us. The Bible says that the prayers of a righteous man are better than much. Yeah. Right. Verse 27, uh, 15, uh, Matthew 15, 27. Oh, I had a scripture, uh, Psalms 20, uh, 37, uh, 4 says, Delight yourself in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Uh, but now on to verse 27, Matthew 15, 27. The woman said, Yes, Lord, yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Then Jesus answered and said, Oh, woman, oh. He was like, Oh, there oh, oh, oh. it is. See, the Lord, that's all like the Lord the whole time, he knew what he was doing. Mm-hmm. Sure he did. Mm-hmm. He, he brought it that about in order for us to, to see this heart on display so we can okay. see what's, what's going on. Okay. Um, he always does it okay. in the scripture. Like, oh, woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. She confessed what Christ laid at her feet. Oh, Lord, yeah. Dogs, you know that part? <laughs> Dogs and crumbs? Yes. <laughs> yes, you're right. Yes, you know. But, here's faith. But I know. She confessed what Christ laid at her feet, at her door, sorry. Uh, she uh, laid fast hold upon him and drew arguments even out of his hard words. But she believed great things of him 
And, she, and uh, thus, uh, she overcame. She won the victory uh, by believing in him. Amen. Her case uh, is an instance of uh, prevailing faith. Right. Amen. And if uh, we could conquer like her, mm. <laughs> then we must imitate her tactics. Right? Right. Right. Mm. And this is what, what it's all about, this heart on display, beginning to imitate and understand what God responds to, yeah. what type of heart God responds mm. to. Yes. He didn't say, man, no, you the king and I ain't going to He, he, he was already going to bless her. I think he just, he wanted his disciples and he wanted us to see today exactly what or how we should position our hearts Amen. before the Lord all the time yeah. we come before him. You want results in your life? If you just want joy, I said, you know, I don't, I'm not, well, that's more for a lot of things. Give me this, that. I don't, I, I just need the joy right. of the Lord right. in my in my heart. Yes. The joy of my salvation. So I might be tired, but I got the joy in there. So I'm like, <laughs> just ask me something. I don't need to see it. So, but I'm tired. Right. Uh, <laughs> we lay down. We lay down. So, um, but we must imitate her tactics, her heart. I'm going to close. Too long, but I got something else before I go. Uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 3. Mm. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Mm. I want y'all to keep this, man. Keep this. If you keep anything on, on, you know, just keep this. Well, that's our poor spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Uh, in this portion of scripture, Jesus, this is the Beatitudes that we read about. Uh, Jesus, in those Beatitudes, Jesus was saying, he, he gave a list of things. Uh, and I'm going to make it short, but it was things like mourners shall be comforted, right? Yeah. Shall be. The meek sat out of him. Right. Even those who hunger and thirst for righteousness shall be filled. But when it came to the poor spirit, it says, blessed are the poor spirit, for theirs is the kingdom, the kingdom of heaven. Right now. You want something right now? You want God right now? You want change right now? If you want faith right now, ask. I got prayed. Somebody prayed for me a long time ago and said, for faith. I was like, oh, yeah. he, he, apparently I need it. Right. <laughs> Got it now. All right. Uh, he's more than I had then. Right. Yeah. Bless on the poor spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Right now, this very moment, and each day, how is the kingdom yours? end with this last scripture. Because I want us to know, at least have some scripture backing on how it is that we have, that it is ours now. Uh, Isaiah 57, 15 says, For thus says the high and lofty one, who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place 
with him who has a contrite and humble spirit. Mm -hmm. To revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. Mm -hmm. Not only does he inhabit eternity, he inhabits us. This was before the New Testament. So understand, this is who God is. This is who he is. He's always wanted to inhabit and be with his people. So you guys just keep pursuing the Lord. Keep looking at the heart. Keep moving forward, knowing that uh, God is able, yes. and He will complete the work that He started. Amen. 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 Thank you. All right. Okay. to be a disciple. 
And now the Lord will walk alongside of you dealing with someone else about how we can glean from it in a positive way that lifts everyone up and leaves everyone blessed. We thank you so much for your presence in this house today, God. Mm. Thank you for the words that have been spoken in exhortation during worship and during the message, the challenges from our pastor. I've had it myself. That message is for me today. Tell you what, if you can't say amen, say ouch. <laughs> I'm saying ouch. So uh, I just, I just, um, I'm thankful, Lord. Thank you for giving us this place to come and hear your word, God, and speaking through this group of people. 